true ensemble. There's no limit to what he could do. He could destroy the Earth. You must say these words. Klaatu, Barada, Nikto. It was definitely an N-word. Klaatu, Barada, Nikto. Klaatu, Barada, Nikto. <laughs> God have mercy upon your souls. Something's wrong. Something's amiss. At a time of evil. You shall die! When the world needed a hero. This one was so I don't want to die! What it got was him. Groovy. You know your shoelace is untied. He's a 20th century guy. For that arrogance, I shall see you dead. Trapped in the Middle Ages. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. This 
is my boomstick. Now, let's talk about how I get back home. Foretold by a mystical book. Within its pages are passages that can send you back to your time. Forewarned by a wise man. You must recite the words, Klaatu, Berata, Niktu. I got it, I got it. Fulfilled by a wise guy. Klaatu, Berata, Niktu. When the army spoke the words, the army of the dead awoke. <coughs> now, he's got a date. Give me some sugar, baby. Sheila! With the army of darkness. You found me beautiful once. Honey, you got real ugly. Sound the trumpets. Raise the drawbridge. Hey, look out! Drop the Oldsmobile. From Sam Raimi. Oh, that's gonna hurt! Director of Dark Man. Yeah. Comes <laughs> Army of Darkness. They live. They breathe. They suck. Army of Darkness. Well, um, I, I personally like the, the first one, Evil Dead, because oh, that is a classic uh, horror. Um, the second one gets a little sillier, and by the third one, of course, it's just pure craziness. 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 Yes, yes it is. And here's a little trivia about that uh, Army of Darkness oh. also. Uh, as you notice in the introduction, uh, they both, uh, there are some key words, uh, uh -huh. Latu, Marada, Niktu, uh -huh. right? Yes, well, that is also used in the day the Earth stood still. Which That's right. Now, did, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, I do believe that, uh, that those three key words did originate from the day the Earth stood still. Is that correct? Right. <laughs> oh, jeez. Scare me when you do that. Jeez. Okay, okay, yeah. I was just bugging there. Just <laughs> out. Okay, okay, calm down, man. Yeah, it's okay. I get a little creepy sometimes. I understand. Go ahead and forgive me. Um, yes, but that, uh, that definitely is a classic movie, and that's for everyone to see. If you haven't seen it yet, you are a gimp. That's okay. all I have to say. You're really missing out. I mean, I mean, it's definitely watching it in the show, but as soon as it's over, head on out to your local movie uh, journal. And uh, you know, check it out. Army of Darkness. You yes. get part three of the trilogy. It's, 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 it's a classic. It's a cult classic, if you will. Definitely. Uh, the next one is the Day the Earth Stood Still, and uh, that is that is really a good one. I you know I had never seen that, and uh, I was watching that you know a couple weeks ago with uh, my friend Gim, uh -huh. and uh, that was definitely very interesting. The only thing I do not like about it is. Um, just well, take a look at the package, you'll see. Alright, here we go, Dave. There's some sale. We interrupt this program to give you a bulletin just received from one of our naval units at sea. A large object traveling at supersonic speed is headed over the North Atlantic toward the east coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Drew Pearson. We bring you this special radio television broadcast in order to give you the very latest information on an amazing phenomenon. The arrival of a space ship in Washington. The Army has taken every precaution to meet any emergency which may develop. Just a minute, ladies and gentlemen, I think something is happening. <laughs> to give you these facts. But if you threaten to extend your violence, this earth of yours will be reduced to a burned out cinder. But he's a robot. Without you, what could he do? There's no limit to what he could do. He could destroy the earth. All vehicles, close in. Let's go.
Sheesh! That was an excellent movie, Jim. I really like the movie, Jim. Yes, I Johnny. Well, you know, I tell you what, one interesting thing I saw in this movie. Yes. Did you notice one thing? Was it? Yeah, you know, I, I do think that Jerry Mathers was in this movie, and, and it happened so quick that I think this might have been his first debut as Jerry Mathers, you know, otherwise known for us at home as The Beaver. Yes, and you said you had a favorite part of this movie. Yes, my, my favorite part is the robot guy, Sean, you know, not only is he cute, not only is he cute, but when he walks, uh -huh. you can see, like, the fabric bend increase in his knees and stuff. I love that. Oh, it's, oh, I love that part. My favorite. The day the Earth stood still is definitely a must see movie. A must see uh, for anyone. Yes, and also the Army of Darkness. So yeah. That is definitely two must Boom Boomsticks. Yes. <laughs> Boomsticks. Yeah. Um, they both good, good movies, movie. highly recommended by Jim and John. Yes. Creep, that is. Creep. The Creep Brothers. <laughs> excellent, excellent movies. Wow. <laughs> 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 Did I scare you, Jim? Yes, you did. <laughs> well, hey, hey, you know. What is that thing in your nose? Well, since I had an implant in my nose, that this this goes directly to my brain. You know, when we were watching, that's the night we were watching the day the earth stood still, too. That's right, and I had to be rushed to the emergency room, and, um... And I had to have this implant, you know, because my brain was going crazy. I heard that, uh... They wouldn't even take you. They wouldn't accept you. They sent you to the dog pound first. They thought I was creepy. Wow. Imagine that. It's craziness. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I know that on uh, coming up soon in the theaters, uh, the islands of Dr. Moreau. That's right. Coming out. That's in the fall. Mm -hmm. And also Mars Attacks. Oh. Yeah. Tim Burton. Good. Will be due for good. Christmas. Like Tim a lot. Yes. And, uh, you know, speaking of UFOs, since that was a, a little UFO movie that, uh -huh. that we just uh, watched, um, let me tell you about the uh, MUFON. The, the MUFON. 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 Now, now, Jim, is, is that a new Chinese dish? No. It's not, okay. No. Well, uh, talk to me about the MUFON network then. Okay. Well, MUFON stands for Mutual okay. UFO okay. Network. And, uh, now, you know, a lot of people are, are always skeptical about UFOs, you know? Indeed. Everyone still has a fascination with them, even if they are skeptics, even if they don't believe. They'll still go to those movies, they'll still watch the UFO, the they that are all the, you know, junk. And, and this whole rediscovery... Oh, excuse me. Whoa! Excuse me, Dan. That's okay. And this whole rediscovery of it. Area 50. <laughs> Good God, Jim. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. Concentrate and relax here. Okay, <laughs> We're going to make it through this. The whole uh, rediscovery of Area 51 in Roswell has, uh, it, it's just leaving people dissatisfied because the government, you know, they're trying to hide something. Mm -hmm. They're trying to keep secrets. From the general public. Yes, they are. And that's what MUFON is all about. It was started in 1969. Mm -hmm. And um, basically it delves into uh, the probability of extraterrestrial life. Okay, like ETs. Right. Yeah. And, and the existence of... Are you okay? Of UFOs. All right. So, but um, if anyone is interested, uh, there are... There are a mil I mean, a million different organizations That's right. with, with MUFON. And MUFON Virtually is, millions. MUFON is all over, all over the place. It's, it's international, I've been told. It is, it is. Now, if you do want to learn more about MUFON, what you need to do is uh, you need to write a certain, a certain... Uh, Place. Yes, we have an address that, that you can write to uh, MUFON directly for any questions or uh, comments or any sightings you might might have seen. Um, and well, hopefully the GIMP will fly that one in, um, the, our address on that. Uh, I don't know. Where is the GIMP? There he is. Thanks, GIMP. Uh, that's MUFON, Mutual UFO Network. Uh, Let's see that address. Yeah, there we go. 103 Old Town Road. 
That's Sequin, Texas, 78155-4099 USA. That's right, and this is the worldwide headquarters for the UFON network. UFON, sorry. UFON, I was thinking UFO, so I said UFON. But this is uh, the uh, worldwide uh, connection, uh, information center, if you will. And if, if you do, if you do see a UFO and you would like to report a UFO to the MUFON network, you can simply call this number on your screen, 1-800-UFO-2166. Right. That's 1-800-UFO-2166, and that's for, for anything at all to do with UFOs. If you, you know, if you, you know, wake up one day and your, your cow's turned upside down his back, you know, or something like that. Or you have crop circles in your yard. That's right, you know. Anything that, that you, you might find a little bit crazy, you can indeed call the UFO uh, MUFON network at 1 800 UFO 2166 and report this to them. And within two or three minutes, a, 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 a team of experts, UFO experts, will be dispatched to the location and they will rip, arrive within 24 hours to uh, check this out and investigate it thoroughly. And that might mean taking specimens of your dead cow or it could, uh, you know, it could involve like rebuilding of your crops. Um, but it, but they will, will be thoroughly investigated, and um, you, you might see uh, the investigation still come on the Discovery Channel. And it's very interesting. Yes. But now this is not for prank calls. This no, 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 no. Uh -uh. So this is a lot of people. They seem to want to uh, think this is a joke, and it isn't a joke. And it's for only serious callers. Um, which which brings me. Our producer, mm -hmm. uh, Will, got something in the mail not too long ago. That's right, indeed he did. And it was, uh, I believe it was a tape. Yes, it was an actual tape of a, uh, of a call that was sent to us directly from the, the MUFON. Now, wait a second. Now, this was anonymous, so we don't actually know if it was from... MUFON. Oh, okay. I, I, I was, I, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought it came from the MUFON network from an anonymous caller. Right. Well, okay, I see. So we, we, an anonymous person sent us this tape, uh -huh. and we uh -oh. have actually, oh, wow. Uh -huh. Okay, oh, Johnny, Johnny, oh. are you okay? Okay. That implant really is. Yeah, it's important. It. Okay. Okay. So this, this tape is an anonymous call, so we don't know if actually, you know, this is real. We, right, you know, our team of experts in the studio have diagnosed this tape, well, they think it's real. Well, let's go ahead and uh, we'll take a listen to this tape, and, and you, the viewer at home, can, uh, can see for yourself uh, what you think about it. Actually, here. they got to hear, because they can't see. Yeah. They can't see it. Just take a listen, and uh, you decide if you think this is a true call or what. Okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, listen in. The actual new phone call. And now I'm so. Poor Bobby, I hope, he, I hope he's okay. Uh, I sure hope he is. 
If anybody wants to send any donations to poor little Bobby, you can send them directly to John and Jim Creek. <laughs> we do like dead chicken legs. Okay. Anyway, next, uh, I think we want to talk about uh, the UFO calendar. There are a bunch of symposiums that you can go to, and um, we will bring those on our screen here in just a few seconds. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, why don't we take a look here? We'll be at the UFO, I suppose, various uh, uh, places that you can go to talk about this around the country. Right. Um, the you solve the Bobby problem. That's right. Uh, Bobby's talked about a lot of these conventions and symposiums, and also as well as other ways to uh, prevent, um, you know, UFOs, you know, harmful UFOs, and uh, that's right, and investigations on UFO sites. All right. Ooh. All right, here we go. September 7th to 8th, we have the 5th Annual Midwest Conference UFO Research at Big Cedar Lodge, south of Branson, Missouri. If you're interested, uh, please contact Quest at 2661 South Patterson, Springfield, Missouri, 65804, or call 417, there you go, 882 6847. And on September 13th to the 15th, we have the Tampa UFO and Metaphysical Convention at Kimberly Plaza Hotel in Tampa, Florida. And for more information on this convention, you can uh, contact Project Awareness at PO Box 730, Gulf Breeze, Florida 32562. Or call 904-432-8888, or you can give them a fax at 904-438-1801. And next we have September 14th and 15th, the 6th Annual New Hampshire MUFON Conference, Yokins Comfort Center at Portsmouth, New Hampshire. You can contact Peter R. Jeremiah at 571 Bracket Road, Rye, New Hampshire, 03870. And on September 21st, you can go to the Mississippi MUFON UFO Conference um, at MUFON of St. Louis, St. Peter's Holiday Inn in St. Peter's, Missouri. You can, you can contact Bruce Wideman at 314. 946-1394 for any more information on this St. Louis uh, MUFON convention. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Now, have you ever, uh, have you ever been to a, uh, a uh, one of these conference UFO conferences? No, I, I myself have not, but I uh, have a chance that they, they, they do have a, uh, a, a big population that's in there to uh, check this out. Yes, they do. Now, one thing that we had failed to mention is uh, we were going to have a D&D &D convention calendar, and as of now, we don't have one. That's right. We, we uh, ran a little behind uh, um, and getting information for this, so we won't have this for you for this week, but we will have it up and coming in the future for you. Yes. Um, there are only a couple that I can uh, recommend as of now that uh, definitely one is Magnus Opus Con, which I discussed earlier, Mock. Um, that was just held uh, in Atlanta in June, and uh, very interesting, very interesting. If you've never been to a sci-fi yes, oh, wow. if, you've ever, if you've ever been to a sci-fi convention, you, you need to go. Um, if you are not watching the show, which you should do every day, I, I, I suggest, um, go check out Dragon Magazine or uh, Good magazine. Yes. Very good quality there magazine. We want to give you all the latest information on the calendar and events. And uh, we'll tell you actually who these speakers are. And uh, check that out. Also, you'll get a lot of interesting uh, product information on uh, on the and There are upcoming Dungeons and Dragons events. That is right. That, that is correct. So. And uh, did you hear, uh, Johnny? Yeah. Um, actually, speaking of a little, uh, a little uh, thing, uh, facts I picked uh -huh. up. Um, coming up in the fall, a television show. This is kind of interesting. Michael Caine 
Are you playing? Yes, so we play Captain Nemo. A remake of 20,000 Leagues of Really? I did not know that, Jim. That is very interesting. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I do like him a lot, and uh, it will be very interesting to check that out. Well, anyway, I gotta tell you a story. Okay. A very, very interesting story. It, I'm, I would say I'm the best storyteller. Wait a minute. Whoa, what? I have a story for you. Who is that? Uh oh. My friends call me Scallop the Storyteller. Wow. Now sit back and relax and listen. Okay, alright. Tell a story. I have a story about the Bell Witch. Wow. Here we go. The Bell Witch, called Kate by those who knew her was one of the great phenomenons of Tennessee history. In 1804, John Bell of North Carolina bought a thousand-acre tract of land in Robertson County. He then moved his large family to the spot near the village of Adams. The farm is about four miles from the Kentucky line. The Bells were a large, prosperous, and happy farm family until about 1817, when the Bell Witch appeared. Kate was a turn of a sartorial witch. That is, she never appeared in human form. She was a weird and invisible apparition who came from everywhere and nowhere. And her only object was to haunt and persecute the Bells. John Bell was Kate's particular enemy, and she finally caused his death by poison. Kate Whoa. was a rough witch and kindly disposed toward none other than Mrs. John Lucy Bell. One of her favorite tricks was to snatch the covers off the beds as fast as they were made up. In a more credulous age than this, people from all over the state were impressed by the doings of the Bell Witch. From miles around, they converged on a lonely Bell farm to see and hear the strange goings on. But Kate never disappointed them. After the death of John Bell in 1820, he departed for seven years, then she returned to haunt other members of the Bell family. A particular victim was Betsy Bell, who wanted to marry a young man named Joshua Gardner. He did not approve, and the marriage never took place. All accounts have it that Andrew Jensen personally visited the Bells and had an encounter with the witch. He gave him a fine demonstration of her powers, put a professional witch later to flight, horse pistol, silver bullet, rabbit's foot, etc were not withstanding. En route to the house, the witch stopped the wagon containing Jackson's camping equipment and provisions. The horses could not budge the wagon, even after the general greased the wheels, until the witch said, You may go now, general. I'll see you later. By the eternal, boys, said the general. This is worse than fighting the British. In 1828, the witch left again, this time to return in 107 years, which would have been 1935. In 1934, Dr. Charles Bailey Bell of Nashville published a book about the Bell Witch, one of three which have been written on the ubiquitous ghost. He referred to the witch as a spirit and predicted her return in another form in 1935. Kate failed to show. 200 yards from the old well and the site of the original Bell House, on the side of a hill is the family burying ground where Keith's victim, John Bell, lies buried. Wow. That was an excellent story. I wonder who that crazy, crazy guy was. Wow, he told a very fascinating story. He, he is very, very frightening. He is frightening. He frightened me so badly I ripped your, your hairy chest hair off. And you. let me tell you, that didn't feel good. I'm sorry, Johnny. I, you know how I get when, when creepy stories emerge from, from just nowhere. Uh-huh. Wow, it's, it's scary. Very scary. Well, we got to... Um, I guess we got to say our goodbyes because it's the end of the show. Is, is it that time? Yes. But join us next week when we'll be reviewing a couple interesting movies and we'll have some more crazy uh, 
some BHM stuff. That's right. right. We, we do have. I, I, I'm really excited about the movies that we're going to be seeing this next so week. So am I. And, uh, very good. Find very out good. what a BHM is. That's week. right. Stay More tuned. information. That's right. So join us up for all your good sci-fi and horror information. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Bring it on home, baby. Who's that creepy man in the back? Oh, oh what is that? Whoa. Who is that guy? That's the John Jims. Oh, wow, oh, yeah. See you next week, folks. Yes, next week.